Okay, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to use the normal table to find the area under the normal curve given a z-score. Um, so when you're given a z-score, remember that a z-score is basically just telling you how many standard deviations above or below the mean is. And a z-score is in the standard normal distribution, which means that it's centered at zero and the standard deviation is one. So zero would be here, and then I'm basically counting by ones in each direction. So negative 1.78 would be down here. It's more than one, but less than two standard deviations below the mean. And so to the left of is what most tables give you. So most normal tables give you um, the area to the left. Some of them do give you the area to the right, so make sure that you look at your normal table on the key to make sure that yours matches mine. Um, so for this, what we have here is this is a normal table, and they can look slightly different. Uh, let me adjust this just a little bit so you can see it better. Okay, um, so with this, Mine shows you up at the top that it's the area to the left. So this table gives you the area to the left. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the first two values and look for that in the left-hand column. And then we're going to try to find that same value in the upper column. So on here, I'm going to go, because these ones are positive z-scores and I'm looking for a negative 1.78, I have to go to the other side. So I'm going to go down until I find negative 1.7, which is right here. So I'm going to go across this row, and I can't highlight with this. Um, but I'm going to go across this row for negative 1.7 until I get to where it matches up with the column that has the 8 in it. Okay, so I'm going to go across the negative 1.7 until I find the 8 at the top, which is the last decimal place. And this is the area under the curve. So I would just write down the 0 0.0375. And that is my answer, and that's it. Sorry, it was 0 0.0375. Okay. Um, for the second one, it's the same thing, but this time, um, because it's a positive z-score, that tells me that it's going to be to the right-hand side of the mean. And so since I'm looking for everything to the left of this value, I'm looking for this area here. And it always helps to show a picture just so that you can see what's happening. Okay, so we're looking for to the left of z equals 0.34. So now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to look for 0 0.3 in the left-hand column and 4 at the top. And again with this, you are going to look... Um, if you have a negative z-score, you would look on this side. And this time, because I have a positive z-score, notice that all of my positive z-scores are going to have an area that is greater than 50%. All of my negative z-scores will have an area that is less than 50%. Um, so with this, let me just center it a little bit better. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find 0 0.3 here. And then I'm going to go across until I find the 4 at the top. And so I can see that the area is 0 0.6331. So the area for this one is 0 0.6331. You could write this as a decimal or a percent. Basically, this is saying that 63.3% of the area is to the left of this z-score. Okay, the next two are going to be a little bit more complicated because as we saw in the table, it gives us the area to the left. And now it's asking for information where we're looking for to the right of a z-score. So if I draw out my picture, and all of the pictures look roughly the same, you just draw the best normal model that you can, it's going to be centered at zero, and then 1.23 would be a little bit more than one standard deviation above the mean. And this time, we are looking for this area right here, okay? So we are looking for the area to the right-hand side of 1.23. Well, the table gives us the area to the left. So the table, when I look up 1.23, it's going to give me the area to the left. So option one is to look up the z-score that was given to you. So I can look up the z-score that is given to me. And I have to do 1 minus the area in the table. 
Okay, so what I would do is I would go to one minus, and then I would find the 1.23, so I would go down this column and find 1.2, and then I would cross over until I find three, which is 0 0.8907. So 0 0.8907 is the area that is to the left. So this represents this area to the left-hand side of here is 0 0.89073. So to find the area to the right, which is what I'm looking for, I would just do 1 minus 0 0.8907, and I get 0 0.1093. So approximately 10.93% of the area is to the right of a z-score of 1.23. And I did put down here options. You do have another option. And to me, the second option is easier. Um, because it requires less work. Option two is you're going to use the fact that a normal curve is symmetric. So that means that everything um, in this tail is going to be equal to the same table, the same tail down here, the area in the tail that's below negative 1.23. So what you can do is you can go to the opposite z-score and just list that table value. Okay, so what I mean by that is the opposite of 1.23 is negative 1.23. So I would pull up my table and I would go back to the negative side. Okay, and I would find negative 1.2. I'm trying to get this to fit on my screen. So I would find negative 1.2, which is down here. Let me just expand this just a smidge so we can fit the whole thing on my computer. Sometimes it works wonderfully, and other times it doesn't. Hold on, let me use my mouse on my keyboard because I can't get it to there we go. All right, so with this, what we want to do is we're looking for negative 1.2, and then we're going to go across till we find the 3. And notice it gives us 0 0.1093, which is the same answer that we got in the last one. So the area is just 0 0.1093, and then you don't have to do any subtraction. That is going to be the value. So either way, you get the same thing. You can either do 1 minus the area in the table for the given z-score, or you can just go to the opposite z-score, and that will give you the area to the right, because it's always the same since it's a symmetric distribution. The last one is the most complicated to do with a table. Um, this one I honestly prefer doing in calculators, mainly because of the fact that um, it is much more accurate in a calculator than it is using the table. Um, the table is rounded value, so because you're dealing with two things, it does um, give you an, an approximation, and I like more exact answers. It's not wrong, it's just I like more precise answers. Okay, so negative 1.78 would be down here, and 1.2 would be somewhere up here. And then we would just find the area in between. So whenever you're finding the area in between two z-scores, what you want to do is you want to find the area of the larger minus the area of the smaller. Okay, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to find this area first. So this is going to be our larger value. So I'm really looking for 1.20. They don't typically write the zero on there, but you understand it to be zero. So if I pull up my table, I'm going to find 1.20. So I'm going to go to the positive side. And in the Z column, I'm going to find 1.2, which is right here. And then I'm going to go to where it lines up with the zero, which is the very first one. And I would write down 0.8849. So the area of the larger is 0.8849. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the area of the smaller. So I'm going to look for the negative 1.78. Because essentially what we're doing here is this 0.8 eight four nine is the total area starting from here all the way to negative infinity well we want it to stop right here at the 1.78 so basically we're just going to subtract out the area that is below that and that will give us the area in between so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull up my z table again and we're going to find negative 1.78. So I'm gonna go back here. And if you remember, we already did do this one in the first one, so I could have just gone back to that one. 
Um, but just to make sure, we would go to negative 1.7, and then we would go across to the 8, which is the 0 0.0375, which is what we found in part A, um, but just to show you again. So now our final answer is just the difference of those two values. So if I plug into my calculator 0.8849 minus 0 0.0375, we end up with 0.8474. And this would give me the area in between z-scores of negative 1.78 and 1.2. So just to recap, make sure that when you are given a z-score and you're finding the area, make sure to look at the key on your table. So whatever table you have, make sure you look at the top. If it's shaded to the left, that means all of these values are areas shaded to the left. I have seen them where they give you the values where it's shaded to the right, and that table will only give you the values that are to the right of that z-score. So make sure you look at the key at the top of your table to make sure it matches mine. Um, if you need negative z-scores, they are going to be on the negative side. And they will always be less than 50%. And then if you are looking for positive z-scores, make sure you go to where the z-scores are positive. And they will always be above 50% for the area to the left. If you are finding the area to the right, you can either do 1 minus the area in the table for the given z-score, or you can always go to the opposite z-score because the area is going to be the same. And in between, it's always area of the larger minus the area of the smaller z-score. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well. And if you get a chance, please subscribe.